very happy now to announce and to give the stage to Dr. Alexander Tournier and Rachel Roberts from the Homeopathic Research Institute. And I'm curious on <laughs> 10 years and 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, thank you, Michael, for making this even harder because it's not going to be 10 years and 10 minutes anymore. Um, when we first did the schedule, we only had 10 minutes available because of all the good talks. So I said, OK, we'll just have to make it work. So we'll call it 10 years and 10 minutes. Then things changed, and this slot opened up that was a bit bigger. And that's when we'd realized already that there was no way we could possibly try and capture everything we wanted to say in 10 minutes. So it's now 10 years in 10 minutes-ish. <laughs> just a new title of the talk. <laughs> yeah, it's great to be able to take some time to reminisce and, and tell you about the stuff that we don't usually talk about as we're busy just talking about the science or doing the science or helping in the, the science, is really, uh, to take the time and tell you about the stories and everything that we've actually been uh, doing over the years. So to, to, to go back memory lane, actually uh, it all started with uh, Marcus Fernandez, the, uh, the head of the uh, Center for Homeopathic Education in London, where I was studying homeopathy uh, many years ago. And over lunch, he said, Alex, the attacks are terrible we need more science, can you do something? Uh, I was working at Cancer Research at the time and uh, I had been thinking, yes, probably we really need to do more research. And I, it got me thinking, how, how do we do something? How do we create a center that would be able to make a difference? So I was fortunate very early on to get the help of key players in the field at the time. Uh, Dr. Thompson, who we already heard, uh, Dr. Peter Fisher, who unfortunately uh, is not with us anymore, and uh, Dr. Harold Relton, who you've just heard of. Uh, with their help, uh, I was able to uh, secure the, the word institute, which is a protected term in English law, and we were, I was able to go and with 50 pounds put down Homeopathy Research Institute at the company's house. That was the beginning. And then, of course, uh, at the beginning, I had, uh, uh, there was only my enthusiasm, and uh, that's about it, and an idea. Um, and I was uh, taking uh, advanced lectures in homeopathy with uh, uh, Charles Wansborough at the time, who had no idea, was actually very wealthy. So I was just chewing his ear at every break about this amazing project of a fantastic institute that would solve all the problems in homeopathy. And um, eventually, he was tired of me you know, going on, and uh, he said, Alex, Here's 20,000, start. And then, you know, I was very aware that being a scientist, I'm not the most practical person. Uh, you might have noticed that when it comes to anything practical here, it's more like this direction that you should look <laughs> rather than me. Um, uh, if you want to talk about equations and quantum physics, I'm here, practical stuff. Um, so I was very aware of that, so I had to get help. And uh, the first really great help was from Arlene Line, our first CEO who really helped uh, shape uh, the HRI legally, the structures, um, filing for the Charity Commission, uh, uh, and, and very complicated uh, stuff like that that needed to be done, accounts and so on. So uh, that was uh, Aline Line, and also we were very fortunate to get another patron on board, Lady Mary Holmes, who helped uh, get a bit more oomph behind the whole institute. So uh, with that also, uh, I was very, very proud to generate the first logo of the HRI in PowerPoint. And uh, you see, it's a, it's a very advanced logo. I, it, was, you know, it took me a lot of sweat and tears. And, um, and it, it's really good. I, I really loved it. You know? but, um, some people didn't really love it as much as me, so we quickly changed to uh, this one. <laughs> and I thought, this was it. I mean, like, you, know, you can't get swankier than this, right? It's got a little swoosh. And you are like, the nice colors and you know the stuff it's it's the deal uh, but then uh, Rachel came on board and you know that's uh, it had to be even better I mean like you know we're talking perfection now so uh, up we go and <laughs> <laughs> ta-da <laughs> uh, <laughs> born on my kitchen table in London uh, years back <laughs> Um, the name Institute has caused some confusion around the world because, of course, when you say Institute, most people think great big fancy building, lots of people, lots of money. And, of course, that is not quite us. 
Um, I have to explain that is, was never the intention to give that impression. The word institute, as Alex said, is a highly protected term in UK law. So what he was trying to do when he created this and used this word, it's all about the level of the expertise in your organisation. And because HRI had the experts on board from the beginning, he was able to get that term. So that's why we use Institute, that's why we're proud of it. It is nothing to do with size and money. And really, Institute, if we're saying it's about expertise, that really is at the heart of what we do. We're very aware that it doesn't matter what, it's not just what you say, it's who says it. We wanted HRI to be built on this concept of credibility. We wanted to build something that for the homeopathy sector, you could always know if HRI spoke about something, it was coming from a scientist who knew what they were talking about. Um, and of course, bringing Alex's expertise in at the beginning centre was very, very important to how it evolved. And I just remember, we were reminiscing, many, many years ago, I think I'd only been involved for about a year, we went over to America to start raising awareness. You've got to have people know that you exist if you're going to get any support. And there was a big conference, nobody knew us, we were going around telling everybody about HRI. And there was a big dinner, and Alex was way down the other end of the table, I was one end, and uh, a world-famous homeopath who has to be nameless said to me, Rachel, it's nice to meet you, but I've got to tell you, this HRI idea is terrible. Um, what you're doing is appalling, you're going to damage homeopathy, you have to stop, which is an interesting dinner conversation. So I, I said, you know, what's your problem? And he said, that man down there, he's causing damage. The last thing we need is homeopaths like you and him going around the world pretending you know about science. We cannot have people like homeopaths using the word quantum like they know what it means. So I have to say I took a tiny bit of satisfaction from saying that man down there he has a first in physics from Imperial. He did his master's in theoretical physics at Cambridge, his PhD in Heidelberg. Oh, and he's working for cancer research for the last 10 years. I think he knows what quantum means. So, <laughs> tiny moment of triumph, but it really, it's not the first time we heard that and it won't be the last. We do have to stress to people that uh, if we say something, we know what we're talking about. And the reason that we can say that on so many topics to do with homeopathy research is because we have an amazing scientific advisory committee. If you look at who's on there for clinical research and for basic research, we have really a who's who around the world of all the most important scientists. So that's really where we feel our academic strength comes from. Oh, and then there's me. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, we wanted also to stress that uh, it's a team and Rachel is uh, you know, completely essential to uh, the team in the sense that she brings a lot, a lot of expertise. She's in her own right uh, a homeopath, a uh, very renowned homeopath, also a lecturer of homeopathy for many years. And when she got involved with us, she was already a research consultant for the Society of Homeopaths, which was great because she was completely ready to join the HRI with all the tasks that we were uh, embarking on. Uh, and just, uh, just to make you laugh, when she joined the HRI, she was supposed to be, supposed to be a quiet coordinator. It was supposed to be a side job to her consultancy job that was the real thing at the time. Um, and you can imagine that within six months, she had basically taken over the whole thing. So. <laughs> uh, the first um, event I actually got involved with for HRI, just after I joined and started to be slightly less quiet, um, was the launch at the House of Commons. And this was a really, really big moment for HRI because um, if you remember, we had just had the UK House of Commons report come out, that ridiculous negative report. So when we were discussing how to launch the charity, what better place than to do it right in the Houses of Parliament uh, to give the message that homeopathy research is real and it's extremely important, in fact, essential to the future of homeopathy. So that was a really big step for us and sort of set the tone of how we wanted to continue. Um, and it won't surprise you that Alex and I were well aware we had no idea how to organise a reception at the House of Commons. So uh, we needed help and we brought in the wonderful Simon Wilkinson Blake, who had got experience of just such events, and he did a fantastic job for us. And he was only ever supposed to work for us for that event. He went off, I said, thank you very much. I lasted about three weeks before I was already so overwhelmed with work. And I said to Alex, can I have Simon back? Because I really need help. And Simon came back then as our company secretary and event manager, and he's still here. So um, thanks to Simon for keeping us rolling. And just to introduce you to the rest of our current team, we have Chris Connolly, who joined us about 18 months ago to do our communications, made a massive difference to what we can do, actually having a proper dedicated communications officer for the first time. 
Um, Angelina Mosley, many of you know from her great work on the Australian Report with me and on the ESAC project. Um, Angelina has been a godsend for me because she gives us this incredible academic input on a daily basis, not for just special projects. She's the one I can point people to when we need a really brilliant academic response day to day. And Amy is our newest addition to the team. Uh, once we got a bit bigger, we did need more help on the event side, and she's really helped us out with this conference. And uh, so that was the team, and in terms of our uh, current board, it's also very small, uh, but effective. Uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, Liz Thompson very early on. That was great. She's remained with us all, all along. Uh, uh, Charles uh, Wansborough also remained on the board, and uh, we had also the help of uh, Peter Vixveen, who uh, got his PhD under Claire, and he's now moved on to the University of Stavanger in Norway, but he's still helping us on the board of the HRI. Now, to present to you uh, quickly uh, the uh, research that's been going on at, at the HRI, there's really three aspects to it. Uh, how do uh, homeopathy medicines work? Uh, what can they treat? And also, very important for us at the HRI is what is already there in the evidence base and showing it uh, to people. Uh, in that respect, we, uh, one of the early projects we got involved in was called HOME, which is a database of clinical research in homeopathy. And uh, uh, we uh, flew over to Germany to do, uh, talk to the Karsten Stiftung. They are a foundation that's uh, world leaders in such databases of complementary medicine. And uh, we uh, were able to join them and help them uh, curate the database. And also, uh, we helped them make it available. Well, we made it available, especially for our more international audience, in a way that was really uh, user friendly on our website. Highly recommend it if you don't know about it. That was a project that was uh, with Robert Matty at the time already and Sean Moss. And uh, moving on, Robert Matty, uh, systematic review program. Robert uh, joined us uh, after he had moved on from the British Homeopathic Association and he was able to uh, continue his research program that he had started at uh, the BHA. And uh, some of that uh, evidence uh, is summarized on our website, on the clinical trial overviews and on our research to go pages. I highly recommend, if you haven't read it, our summary of his individualized homeopathy review. It's highly significant, and really good for us all to really know uh, that evidence. Um, then, really, uh, we were really fortunate to have Claire on board, who was able to oversee uh, PhD students in a university setting giving uh, a huge credibility to all the projects and great support for the students. In particular, so here, uh, Peter Vixveen uh, did his PhD under Claire uh, on depression in adults, resulting in a number of really interesting publications. Uh, similarly, uh, Dr. Philippa Fibert obtained her, her PhD under Claire at the University of Sheffield, uh, doing her PhD on ADHD in children. Again, a number of uh, interesting publications and more to come. And then a, a third project we were involved in uh, and able to help was the IBS project. Uh, and this was particularly uh, important to us because it's set in a NHS hospital, which really is a, you know, quite hard to get into. So we really thought we wanted to support that. So then moving on to kind of more fun fun fundamental research, the, we were uh, really fortunate to be able to support uh, the work of Stephen Cartwright for the first five years. He's now moved on to other funders, but uh, yeah, it's great to, to see his research and his progress. So uh, with that, uh, a quick uh, overview of all the publications uh, peer-reviewed that have been, uh, where we've been involved over the last 10 years. Uh, it's a fast overview. We can <laughs> But uh, just to give you an idea of all the things we've been involved in. So um, the other strand to what we do, of course, is communications. We really feel it's important to uh, use HRI to try and get research to a new audience. We didn't just want to be talking to ourselves among scientists. We realized if we're going to make any progress, you have to reach out to the public and to the media. And to do that, you have to write in normal English. So we had this website when I joined, and as soon as I had the opportunity, 
I really enjoyed uh, playing around with it and creating this. Um, I just wanted something really fresh and bright and new um, that I hoped would encourage people to play on the website and discover and learn for themselves. Because I think there's nothing like people reading stuff for themselves uh, to really uh, find out more about homeopathy and the research. To this day, the most popular bit of this website, it's still the homeopathy FAQs. And the idea behind this is I wanted to give people a sort of set answer to all the obvious things that we hear all the time. There's no evidence, it's placebo, it's a waste of money, whatever. And I wanted those answers to be short and sweet and academically robust. So that's what we've provided there. And we're really proud to say that over the years this project has evolved. It's now been translated into 10 languages. Um, and in fact, we called a halt to them. We got asked for another five languages, and I did have to say no, because maintaining them, of course, is quite a big project in itself. I have been assured that that is all my original text in Chinese. <laughs> of course, it could be a shopping list, for all I know. But um, that's why you have to work with very trusted partners on this. And a big development. This was finished last week. We finally have our whole website in German which has been a big undertaking because it's a huge website. Um, and with all the attacks going on in Germany right now, we're really proud to be able to provide that to help with that situation as much as it can. We're always looking to see whether our efforts actually make an impact. I mean, you do your best, but does it really make a difference? And we had a lovely moment we remembered the other day where we'd just done our first ever conference in Barcelona. Thank God that worked. Um, and then someone said, oh, have you seen um, what David Trudinic just did? And we had no idea. Turns out that David had gone into Parliament with our program from the event. And he'd stood there and said, I've been telling you for years there really is evidence for homeopathy and there is science, but you wouldn't believe me. Here is proof. And he held it up and showed it to them. So that was really lovely. So that was, that was pretty cool. And thank you for that. Our conferences, as you know, are really important to us. And another thing we've invested in heavily is the filming of the conferences. So I don't know if you've met the lovely Phil round and about, uh, but he, his day job is he edits things like um, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of the Jungle, whatever it's called, um, and Coast Australia, you know, little things. Um, and bless him, he does our conferences for us so that the films you get afterwards, you can see every PowerPoint slide, every bit of the speakers. It's as if you are here. So we're already getting lots of requests for slides. We don't do slides because we do this instead. And in fact, of course, there's the odd talk where we can't publish it because it's too sensitive or unpublished data or something. But almost all of our talks ever done are live online, free to view, thanks to our sponsors. So just go to those websites anytime, and there they are. Back to the slightly more mundane, but extremely important. Um, of course, when there are public consultations, we feel it's very important that HRI contributes. Right back to the House of Commons, Alex did do his best to put the uh, message in there that uh, homeopathy research was more positive than they thought. And of course, Australia, when the FDA started taking an interest, when we had problems with the Charity Commission, can you believe the skeptics are trying to get it so you can't have charitable status for charities that promote complementary medicine? Luckily, that's been OK. Um, but yeah, we feel we do have to play our part in all of these challenges. But we're aware that where we really might make a difference is one-to-one -one meetings uh, with people who really make those decisions. Uh, the problem is, I remember thinking, who really wants to be the communications officer for HRI? Because we can hardly talk about anything we really do. The really important stuff we can't talk about. So we're very discreet about the important meetings that we have all over the world. And I found two that I thought I could mention, because they're so long ago, and you know it really doesn't matter anymore. But it was just to give you the flavor of what we do. The first one was because uh, the chief medical officer had gone on TV in the UK and said, homeopathy is placebo. So the moment I saw that, I'm like, no, not OK. I think we need to talk to her. In fact, we got her deputy, which, considering how new we were, wasn't too bad. Um, and we actually did a joint delegation with the faculty and the BHA, and the three of us went together. So that's the kind of thing that we try to do when we see a very obvious problem. Coming right back to 2018, in the UK, the current target is veterinary homeopathy. Uh, this really makes me mad. I mean, vets helping animals, and they're trying to stop it. It's just awful. So I got the call from um, the homeopathic vets in the UK, they had these key meetings with the two regulatory organisations, the BVA and the RCVS. Uh, could I come along and respond to the uh, issues about the evidence? So I was very pleased to be able to attend those ones. I don't think I need to talk about that slide, thank God. 
which brings us on to consultancy. Um, another thing we've been doing, most people don't know about, is of course as an extension of this kind of work, which can be pure consultancy, which again, because it's consultancy, most of it I can't talk about, um, but this is where people do come to us from all over the world and say, we've got this problem, we need to do a scientific submission, nobody at our organisation has the skills, would HRI be willing to write that for us under their name, which we've been very pleased to be able to do. Yes, uh, and so with that, so we come to an end, and um, on behalf of myself and Rachel and our team, uh, thank you for your attention, and also we want to thank all the people we were not able to thank during uh, the presentation, without whose help the HRI would not have been uh, able to, to come uh, to, to be created. So thank you very much.